Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In the previous video, I talked a bit more about making the 3D printing enclosure for my 3D printers. So this will enable me to print more materials in a stable condition. So if you haven't seen that video yet, you can see it on the top right or in the description down below. In this video, we'll talk a bit more about using T-slot profiles to make the work table in the workshop. So for me, it was pretty important to have a good stable and especially a large table for my carbon fiber walls and the vacuum bags that I make. So this is why I decided to make this good table. If interested in all these projects, there will be another video coming later on, uh, talking a bit more about my uh, desk. So I've made a floating desk using uh, Mortex, Beton Serie or polished concrete to finish the tabletop. So that will be in the next video. If you want to see that, that video, make sure to subscribe and you'll get a notification when this video is uploaded. So quick introduction, I talked about all of this in the previous video, but if you're just interested, interested in this video, I decided to include it. So many options are possible using T-slot profiles. It's like Lego, Meccano, uh, or Knex. So you can build everything you want using different types of connections and so on. So in the previous video, I talked about um, planning ahead. So some um, corner brackets cannot be used in different options or ways to assemble things. Um, I've used uh, profiles from Alu, Alex Profile, Dot NL, so a Dutch company, and they sent me an email to say that I missed something about these brackets. So by using a very simple tool, you can make it possible to align them in a cross section. So how do you do it? You just use a screwdriver and you can just tap these little tabs out. So by doing this, you will be able to not have them to be aligned in the slot. So it's possible to make um, cross sections without having them to interlock into each other. So this is an example. So by using the profiles, you'll be sure to have like a 90 degrees because these are 40 by 40 millimeters and they will clamp into each other that way. So here are the preparations for everything. So I have bought the profiles uh, 300 centimeters on 300 and then cut them myself just to give you an idea. So this is not a cheap project. So if you're looking for a cheap project, this isn't probably for you. If you're looking for um, quality and like a very sustainable and durable table, uh, this is for me like a good way to make tables and like things that has to be strong and especially be modular. So it's possible that in two years, I'll say I want a table of four meters long. I can just adjust a few profiles and make it like a different table. So about the entire assembly, I'm not going in too much details. So you can see like the workflow. So I've made the base, then these are the shelves. So it's in three ways. So I have the bottom plate, a shelf plate, and the top plate of the table. And like bottom and top are similar. And then there's this, the shelves in between. So I can adjust the shelves as well. So if later on I want to have a different height in shelves, that's possible. So for the wheels, um, I've just bought them in the local hardware store. So just good wheels. Um, I've added five, so one in the middle and four in the corners. At the end, I added two more wheels in the middle of the table, just because I had some um, profiles hanging a bit too much. So now it's good with seven wheels under it. So for the painting, I decided to use a good paint. So this is for uh, from a company here in Belgium. It's not far from where my workshop is. And it's a very good paint. So it's um, polyurethane paint. So the good thing, it's two components and it's resistant against chemicals and so on, because you never know if I have some acetone using for my projects, I don't want to have like spots on the table from the paint um, dissolving. So this is a good paint solution for everything that has to be industrial grade. So I use this on all metal work that I do, like tables that I did in the past against rust and so on. So first time I tried it on wood and it works well. So it's very easy to paint. You can lay it in a thick layer. I didn't even use a primer here. So I've applied three coats on top layer and just two layers of paint for the shelf and the bottom because 
these won't be that visual. So here is the result after painting all three of them with one layer. So I, st I still have some marks, but you just learn along the way um, using the paint and then you'll see the day after I was able to apply to the second coat and results get better and better. So it's how much time do you want to put into it? So it's the more layers, the better it will look. Uh, for me, it's still a working table, so it's not that important. But if you're looking for good results, you can send it in between as well. So a trick I found is for the brush marks, so the, the brush strokes that I had, I've just used a longer uh, steel on the roller and then I could get better results. So this was after the third coat and then the tables was ready. So I did this in about three days with painting and the woodwork and so on. To give you an idea of uh, linear meters needed, it's about 40 meters. So it's quite expensive, but of course you have the shelves. Uh, so if you're making smaller tables, it could be cheaper. So count on 400 euros for the profiles and some corner brackets, the wheels can be quite expensive as well. And the wood nowadays is very expensive as well. So it's not a cheap table. I think it's around 800 euros total. Um, but if you're interested in all these projects, uh, the next video will be about my floating desk. That might be interesting as well with some more focus on uh, Murtex or Beton Serie or polished concrete finish. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like. Don't forget to leave down a comment and I'll see you guys in the next video. So thanks for watching.